Hi, y'all. Welcome. you're teaching like the span k-12 elementary middle and what is your artistry and really try to pick one thing i know you all because your theater teachers teach everything but what lights you up what's your artistry right why did you get into theater so i'll start i'm jennifer uh, i taught middle and grad school in sunset park brooklyn and in harlem uh, and i'm a choreographer rebecca hi i'm rebecca um, I am at Soundview Academy in the Bronx, uh, teaching six through eight. Um, I started as an actor and singer, um, but my artistry quickly became directing. I'm Gretchen Ferris. I'm at Queens Collegiate in Jamaica. I teach grades six through 12. Um, and also all of my training is in acting, but I love directing the most. 
<laughs> Tony Bennett, Staten Island uh, Middle School as well. And my artistry is um, musical theater, but I basically uh, do acting with the kids. Hi, Becca Brown, Mom Morale Campus in Brooklyn. I teach grades 6 through 12, and my artistry is directing. Hello, Jacqueline Raymond Wegman. I teach 3K through 5. Um, mm -hmm. My artistry is definitely acting and then turn divider. Hi, I'm Victor Martinez. Uh, I teach high school in Washington Heights, and my artistry is music directing. Hello, I'm Luke Wyand. I teach at PS150 Queens, uh, K through five, and my artistry is musical theater. Ian Gould, I uh, teach middle school in East New York, Liberty Avenue Middle School. Uh, my artistry is devising, specifically trying to take real life situations and like sort of non-actor type things, to make mm -hmm. cool stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm Alessandra, or Allie, fine too. I am at MSWA 4 Middle School, and I teach six to eight in Queens, and my artistry, I'm struggling with it. I <laughs> wanna say it's acting, but I'm really intrigued, and I've been working a lot with devising, so I'm, and directing, I've gotten a little Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Um, I teach at Curtis High School in Staten Island, um, so 9 through 12. And I definitely think my artistry is in musical theater because that's what I studied as well, but um, I direct there, so yeah. Greetings, my name is Laura. I work uh, in Forest Hills, Queens with elementary school students, K through 5, and I would have to say my artistry is choreography, but I love directing. Yeah. Uh, again, my name is Bryce, I'm at Tompkins Middle School uh, in Manhattan, uh, and my artistry is acting and sword play. Super fun. So I'm going to ask you, you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but just kind of reflect on it, which is the, this workshop. Is your artistry evident in your classroom? And if it isn't, how can it be? Right? Is there a reason it's not? Are you, is there a barrier with your students? Are you afraid to bring it in? Do you feel like it's not what the school wants of you? What's going on if your artistry is not present in your, um, in your teaching? Because your students will light up when they see you're passionate about something. It might not, sword play would not be my thing, but if you came in and did it, I'd be like, that is so cool that my teacher can teach me that, right? Uh, and I'll enjoy it for whatever long time, and then I'll move, go back to my taft. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going to be excited, right? Uh, so make sure your passion is in your teaching. Right? That's, that's the number one thing. That's also going to give you longevity, right? We teach your, teaching's hard, right? So make sure your t artistry and you're bringing your joy and your passion as much as you can to your teaching, okay? Um, there's a lot I know you have to do. So in all those empty spaces, fill it with your joy, okay? Uh, we're going to do a couple quick activities. These went a little long in the last group, so I'm going to be... I'm going to be stricter this time, okay? So what, what, I'm going to explain it first so you can listen for my voice. Um, if you've been with me before, you've done this. We're going to mingle about. I'm going to ask you to get three, stop three times and pick three different partners, okay? And then each time I'm going to give you a prompt, okay? When I give you that prompt, each person's going to have one minute to talk. These are quick little bits, and then we're going to move on. So listen for my voice, Okay. All right, so to start, just start mingling around the space. Like we're shuffling up a deck of cards. Kind of get your bodies warmed up. You can move a little bit faster, pick up the pace. Here we go. Pick it up even more. And freeze. Find someone closest to you, who maybe not someone you know. We have, we have uh, Jacqueline and Bryce can be first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. This person is your pinky buddy. Touch pinkies or get as close as you can. I know touching's not hard. Great. Make sure you know your pinky buddy's name. Look at your pinky buddy. Do you know your pinky yeah. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Go ahead and mix yourself up again. Pace, move it around. <laughs> shuffle the deck, shuffle the deck. Pick up the pace a little bit, really shuffle the deck. Great, find a second partner different than your pinky. This person is your toe buddy. So toe buddy. 
want to spread out a little bit. Again, one minute for each of you. Yeah? What is something you taught, you can let go. Okay. <laughs> what is something you taught this year that lit your students up? They were like, yes, more, more, more. What's a unit you taught? So share with your partner. Each person, one minute each. What's something you taught this year? Uh, Why are we outside? I'm like, well, because you're warming up for a soccer match. And they're like, 
No, we're not. And I'm like, but, 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 like, does it bring up for you when you start to think about next year? What questions do you start asking yourself? You got the rest of the day? Oh, This year it was two classes of band, one of choir, three of social studies, and an after school theater club. Whoa, three more steps in the after school. Yeah, it, I, they, it would be nice. So we actually did have, have a theater show this year for the first time. She's here with me. And it's like, I don't know if we're going to have theater. I was like, come anyway. Um,
change in that relationship, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, you have to do a little deconstructing, yeah. but you shouldn't not do it. I always tell teachers to, and it's maybe a hack, but I think it's good teaching, is your units of study, so if you're like a pre-K to eighth grade, which some people are, like I teach tenures, right? You can have the same units. Like you can always do playwriting, you can always do theater, right? And then you just go deeper every year, or you know, or the other way around. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't think, oh, I teach kindergarten, I have to think of something, completely reinvent what theater is, right? It's the same, theater is the same thing. So yeah, yeah you know. It's the deconstruction of it. I I really like the question, what would need to happen, right? I think as classroom teachers, we can get really hung up on being only problem focused. Like, why can't I, right? Um, we can get really hung up on being sort of the only, like, only for things. Well, I'm going to do this, and I've I'm, 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 got to make it happen. I really like, what would need to happen, right? I love that. I, I love this thing. What would need to happen for me to do it? <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right? There was this video, I forget the name, I don't know if any of my old students or former students saw it. I used to, to show it. It's an Albert Cullum. Um, if any, I, I had it on VHS. I don't even know how you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so old. Uh, it's probably streaming somewhere. I'll send a link. But um, anyway, he was a he did he wasn't a theater teacher, he wasn't arts integration, he was a history teacher, a fifth grade history teacher at like some school in upper in Westchester. But he was doing arts integration, you know, at the time. It was like in the 40s and 50s. It was revolutionary. But there's this great moment in it where he's going to do um, Midsummer, and he's going to have the whole K-5, and his kindergartners are the fairies. And he goes around and he gives each one of them a marshmallow. And he says, okay, inhabit the marshmallow. And they all just are just kind of floating, <laughs> right? And it's like, yeah, and he's teaching, right? Like, he's not teaching them Shakespeare, but he's teaching them Shakespeare. Right, like, because now they're the fairies and they're in with the older kids, right? And he just hands them all a marshmallow. That's helpful. Right, like, so, and they're little itty bitties, right? And now they're fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream. So there's there's these fun little itty things. Who else? We only have time for one more. Yeah. For me, it's like I do a whole thing where I teach like the basics of theater, and it leads up to a performance, yeah. and it's always at the end when we're doing the rehearsing mm -hmm. that everything falls apart because I can't, it's when I'm teaching a concept, we do this exercise, everybody's doing their thing, I'm in control. Rehearsing, obviously there's some kids who aren't being used and that's when the trouble starts and my attention's here, now they're checking out, what are we doing, and then all of a sudden, and I want them to have a final product as well as my administration, it is good, like, you know, and also for the kids to have a final, this is how to do a little production, whatever it is, but it's that last little bit that's just not working. Are you doing your production like at the end of the semester or the end of the It's year? like at, like whether it's the end of like a trimester, I have a complicated oh. system, but it's yeah. like sometimes it's half year, sometimes well, it's, it's a trimester. Tri Who's tri got a response to that? I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I have similar struggles. We're doing, um, my intermediate class is doing like midsummer, and so the mechanicals aren't Midsummer is the theme of today. Um, so like they're not being used, so I try to like be like, you mechanicals are sitting down right now. Do you guys wanna like maybe run your line? So, but that's hard in the space because then it becomes loud. So I, I too struggle with it, but that's like my, my answer is not like a grand intelligent one. So it's more like, get <coughs> out your scripts and like work together. And like, um, maybe you want me to hold your phone for you. Like, I don't know. I try to be do it in a sassy way where they like try to do. Whatever. I'm gonna answer one of those and then because I think this is that's a huge. I can talk about that too. But, but, but um, common, we we teach 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 perform, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to teach perform teach perform mm -hmm. teach perform teach perform. <laughs> we need to give them opportunities to perform way earlier because then we're asking them to get on stage and remember everything we've taught them. And to your point, is what happens happens, right? But if even in an ensemble building unit, now we're gonna do half the group and you're gonna be audience and we're performing and we're always in the mindset that we are rehearsing for a performance because we're always performing in this class. Every six weeks we're doing some sort of sharing of our work. So it's not this long process with no end in sight and I don't understand the concept yet. Now it's just you're elevating what we're performing, but I'm in the routine and the ritual of rehearsal performance. Is that allowed? Yeah. A little bit. The other problems are <laughs> I saw a hand and then I, I, I was just going to say, like, could you 
have student directors? Like, are there like distinct groups where you can put someone in charge of something? <laughs> Additionally, like often I'll have my kids when it's more integrated, I'll give them like I'll do like a mini lesson at the beginning of class on a topic I'm trying to teach, and then we're rehearsing, and the focus is like working on that skill, and they have like a worksheet where they like think about their own part and answer questions, and like it feels like work, but also it's the work they need to do yeah. for the show. You know what I mean? I don't know if that We could spend the whole, I, 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 I am Sorry. gonna control this a little bit, because I know we could all, right? that's like the big issue, but we'll tell Peter to put a session on that next week. Uh, go ahead and have a seat, still facing here. Yeah, and you all should find each other and, and definitely talk about it over lunch, because that is a real, real reality of our work, is that organized chaos where everyone's engaged in learning and you're getting the work in the job. Go ahead and switch over, Bryce. So, great. So real quick reminder, where, where to start, right? So why do we map? We map because we need to know where we're headed. Right? We need to know where we're going. It doesn't mean we can't pull off to go to the fruit stand or the amusement park along the way, right? But students work best when they, there is structure. That is when they are, feel safe to be creative, right? And we need them to feel safe. We always say we're building these spaces. The structure is the safest way we can make them feel, right? They need to know the adult in the room knows where we're going, okay? They're not just driving around with no gas in the tank, willy-nilly throwing spaghetti at the wall. Right? Then they can't feel creative because they're anxious about who's in charge. Okay? So that's why we map. We map to really give our classroom a structure. Right? We have ritual and routines. Right? We know this about just kids. They need ritual and routines. And we put that in our classrooms. Uh, we work backwards. No one does it better than us. Right? We know how to do a rehearsal schedule. Curriculum mapping is the exact same thing. It right? works from the beginning, the end to the beginning. Uh, so, you can make the next one. So, um, I like to think about curriculum mapping in a four-dimensional approach. So I want you always to be thinking when, you, when you're sitting down to do your work over the summer to prepare for next year, I want you to be thinking about your, your program. So if you're K-8, if you're 9, 12, whatever you are, what do you want them to know and be able to do when they leave your program, right? So when they walk out of Curtis High School, they know these five things. It's been embedded in their learning, right? Or they leave eighth grade or wherever they're leaving you. So what do you want them to know and be able to do when they leave your program? What do you want them to know and be able to do at the end of any given year? So at the end of ninth grade or fifth grade? At the end of the unit? And at the end of the lesson? So you're constantly working backwards. And you're always working with the end. So oftentimes people start with, okay, I'm gonna write my high school curriculum. I'm gonna start with the first day of ninth grade, right? You wanna start with the last day of 12th grade. You wanna decide what that looks like when they graduate. And then you're not gonna do the 12th grade curriculum. Then you're gonna decide what the end of 11th grade looks like. And you're gonna decide what the end of 10th grade and the end of 9th grade looks like, right? And we're so lucky because all the things we know as theater artists apply to our curriculum, okay? Beginning, middle, and end, right? Our units of study need to have beginning, middle, and end. Our lessons need to have beginning, middle, and end. Their time with us has a beginning, middle, and end, right? And every entrance is an exit from somewhere else. So our units need to flow. We need to end the unit, improv and now we're going into playwriting and we're taking everything we brought with us into that next unit, right? We're not kind of bouncing all over the place. We're helping them see those connections and we're ending our units and moving on to the next. Yeah? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Questions about that? Yes. It does make sense. Okay. It's so funny that you're all sitting like this, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it does make sense, but I struggle with this a lot. Um, and I, this is my third year teaching middle school elementary school teacher I saw like kindergarten one year and then I wouldn't see those kids possibly until third grade maybe fifth because of how the schedule went mm -hmm. on. I would see the kids once a week so I learned about backwards mapping and mm -hmm. like planning and having everything connect and then it all kind of blew up in my face for six years. <laughs> now I'm in middle school and I'm seeing them four times a week six through eight and for the most part they stay with me and now at the end of year three seeing what my sixth graders know now as eighth graders, I'm seeing a lot of holes. Okay. And I think that's a, a product of like my kind of scatterbrain trying to try things sure. again, almost like a first year teacher. Sure. So I just wonder in trying to connect all of these things and trying to look at the end, because I also sometimes start at the beginning, like yes. what do I want to survive the first <coughs> yes. day with? Sure. Um, 
figuring out what is, I guess, age appropriate and also trying to anticipate what my students are going to want to learn or should know and meeting them where they're at. So yeah. I really struggle with that backwards planning in that so sense. Maybe people can resonate with that, right? Mm -hmm. What I would say to all of that is, so now that you've got your, so it's great, right? You've got your eighth graders, you've got these folks, and you're seeing the holes. So I want you to write down what those holes are. And then I want you to go back and say, where should I chop those, mm -hmm. right? Give yourself grace, yeah, right? You did right? I didn't teach that, that's okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's also theater, like they're gonna be good humans, like life, no one is dying, right? Like, so they didn't get projection, they'll get it later, right? It's okay, so give yourself grace. And then go back and say, okay, where should I have taught that? Okay, where could I have taught that? You, you're like 95% there, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you're like, oh, you just have to go in now and go, oh, they don't have these three skills. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back, I should have taught those in sixth grade, or let me scaffold those up, mm -hmm. okay? So just go back, plug it in, and then start again. And it's okay. Good. <laughs> Any other thoughts on that last piece? So again, at the top, right? It was like so cold in here, and now they've done something, and now it's like sticky in here. It's like gross, right? It's like humid. Like my hair is gonna start to. I'm like Monica in Friends. It's gonna start to just. And um, but it's still in the recording. Uh, so right. So I like to start curriculum. Again, you guys are like. I like to start curriculum writing with your own artistry, bringing your passion and your core values, right? And these should be changing. The world is changing. Students are changing. We're now several years out of a pandemic. I wouldn't be surprised if your core values over the next several years change every year. And as new teachers, right, you evolve. So I want you to think about your core values for a minute. So something to write on or your phone to type on or in your head, whatever your process is, I don't care. And I don't want you to think about the intrinsic value of theater because we all know there's a laundry list of the wonderful things Cedar does for the human. I want you to think about what you want your classroom to teach your students, right? So for me, and for a long time I had, this is my third kind of iteration of my core value, which is I really want my classroom to be a place for students to really find their voice in a way that's like, I want them to be able to work out some of that social stuff, right, in my space. So that way when they're met with those real situations, so I'm really into Bilal's work right now. I'm really into that. Um, into Bilal's work? Yeah, I'm really into a little bit of forum and bringing back, like, how do I deal with social situations? I don't want to wait till I'm in it, right? So that's really the headspace I'm in, right? Because I work a lot with middle school students and I have middle school daughters. Um, so that's my core value right now. So I want you to think about yours. And really it's one, maybe two. It can't be a whole lot, right? Because it needs to be in your work. So what do you want for your classroom, for your students? Give it two minutes.
too verbose, so it's hard for me to, to be <laughs> concise. But my two biggies is empathy through theater. Learn how to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Very lacking in middle school. And advocacy and activism through theater. I'm also a full girl. Advocacy and activism through theater. Tell your stories and explore how you can change the world. I started, yeah. And then I kind of like, tied it in. The together I and the one. building something up. Like, what is most important? And like, yeah, I wanted to be leader. Please do But like, do you have the skills to work as a team to build something rather than just sure and build each other up? You know what I mean? hundred percent. And in this idea of building, not just with the people you like. Yes. All of us. Right. We are working Because that they always want to work with their friends. Well, I'm going to be able to Life is Oh, wow. I mean, it's, uh, it's been from a strange situation. All right, wonderful. Piece. It was usually based around things that were happening in their community. 
Um, so then I write down, what do I want them to know and be able to do, okay? And usually when I do this, this list is gonna be huge. It's not gonna fit this box. It's gonna be huge, right? Because it's everything I need them to know for the year, right? So then I think to myself, okay, well, what else do I need to teach them to get them to, at that level of skill, right? And then I would, so that's why I have these things. They also would do their text, so I need them to have that for production. They need to know the structure of a play to be able to devise a play. They need some improv skills. They need some interviewing skills, right? And then they need some basic performance skills, and I always start a strong ensemble. Okay? And along the way, I'm writing, what do I need them to know and be able to do? Now, middle school, I might get here and go, oh, okay, I can't do all this in one year. So I'm going to take a copy and paste and put this in seventh grade. And I'm going to say, great, in seventh grade, I want them to end with a, you know, half devised, half scripted piece. So in sixth grade, I want them just to culminate in some improv, long form improv, right? I'm gonna start with this goal, this big goal, and I'm really gonna backward map my whole three years with them, okay? Always stopping to ask two questions. What do I want them to know and be able to do? Are my core values present? Yeah, okay. is my artistry present? And then just another quick, just to say my process, then once I do that, for all three years, Right, so I've done that for all three years, or six years, or whatever, however many years your program is. Then I go back in and I write an essential question for each unit. That's my next step, that's step two. Right, and an essential question, if you don't know, yes please, is a large overarching question that has no right answer, right? That any student can have their own interpretation of. And I write one for each. An example, how to, oops, oops, oops. There we go. So just an example, how does studying the rules of improv impact our scene work, right? So again, beginning, middle, and end, I'm setting them up for improv knowing we're going into scene work, right? So that's my reflective, my essential question. And then once I write my essential question for all my units, I can do that in any order I want. Uh, then I go back to my unit six, and I start back here on lesson six, and I will, I will take all the, what I want them to know and be able to do, and I'll start to chunk that out and go, okay, I'll teach that in lesson six, that in lesson five, but I'm always working backwards, right? Always working backwards. I say six, because again, I need structure. A lesson is not a day. A lesson might be three days, right? It might take you three days to teach a full lesson, so don't feel constrained to that. Um, you know your students, right? So I say six, so in my mind, I, I need to chunk things out, like, okay, these are the six concepts I'm gonna teach in this unit. They may take as much time as as they take. Questions or thoughts on this? Yeah. As far as the learning part of the lesson that might be like three days or however long, do you still stick with just one learning target or like for each day? I would have one day. learning target. Oh, okay. I need three days to teach that because exactly. they're all going to share or, you know, there's some time. Yes, just one. Because you also mentioned, um, I think it was in regards to what you brought up, like when rehearsal comes, like everything kind of falls apart. Um, but when you're doing a lesson, do you include kind of like a share or like production piece in that lesson? So what I might do, so say I'm doing an improv unit, right? I might say, I might design my improv unit and say, okay, for seventh graders, I want them to, on the last day, I want them to perform long form improv, okay? And that's gonna take three days because my class is 30 kids in it, right? So that's the last day is the performance of long form improv. But all the way up to that, as I'm teaching the skills, yeah, we're sharing. So if one day the skill was um, the concept of yes and, right, it's the top of the unit, and I just want to understand the concept of yes and, then at the end of that class, I'm gonna have them share in partners yes and, right? Uh, or I'm gonna call them up and we're gonna, you know, however, whatever my class needs. So yeah, my lesson ends with a demonstration of that skill for the day, right? And I might have to do that three days in a row because my class is big, or I just wanna reinforce it. I don't. You know, how many of you can learn a skill in one day? <laughs> you got 30 minutes. <laughs> You're never like, let, you know, like you might have to go back to it the next day and do it again. You know, it's okay to like let's let's review that. It went really well. Let's do it again, right? Um, so that's what I would do. And then at the end of the unit, I would have them perform their long form. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then it ends, right? So when I talk about beginning, middle, and end, is every one of my lessons starts with a warm up. They get into a circle. I teach my direct instruction, I play, and then we end in a reflection, right? And I might do the exact same thing for three days, because it just takes that long. I think
me now is, yeah, time to reflect. So we don't have a lot of time. So just grab a buddy. Um, can be the person next to you. Uh, we, we were ALI yeah. answered up. Oh, okay. oh. To the bar on break out. Oh, that's a
do with potential. And then that, um, but people were a little more likely to participate and to give some ideas, because they didn't actually have to get up and do it. But it was the door to me to get inside of, uh, let's, let's get the imagination going, guys. That's actually very big. Yeah. But also, if it was, um, we, we also did like tree stamping and props. So if, I put, if we were in a yeah. physical position and it was right. like this, right. and I would say to the class, okay, so what could that, what could that be? What, what improv could we go into? Maybe I would do it, you know what I mean? And then they would, again, they gave ideas. And it, they, didn't, they didn't have to do it. Right. But then, but then eventually they did. Right. So that worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. The idea are two different people. They do love to right. give ideas. They do, right. It's an opinion type thing, and they love to have an opinion. They and, love to judge. Right. And it's a sense of competition and challenge because, oh, well, you came up with that thing, but I have something better. Here's what I think. Yeah. I think that she right. should be pulling his brain out. With the, like, right, right, right. <laughs> so well, I think that might be. Uh, uh, of uh, breaking through students' resistance to trying and giving ideas based on fear of like failure and being judged, where if you actually break up and have an idea come from one student and then the actual acting out of the idea come from another student, it lowers the, st I don't know, I'm, I'm not explaining that well, but it lowers the stakes in a, in a way. Um, and I, I really like that a lot of this work. Good. Let's go to Tom. Um, I think for me, I, you know, I, it's, it's, it's your whole, the, the whole curriculum mapping, the way you explain it, the way you do it. I'm only a second year teacher, and um, part of the time I was like, yeah, I can wing this curriculum mapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I need a little bit more <laughs> that. You know, like, but uh, there's a reason for it, yeah. and, and structure, and I see it, and I get it, and just to have you say it again, um, and yeah, so I, it, this, just reiteration for me, just having, and talking to some of you guys, yeah, so that's me. Um, I think something I'm excited to think about um, over the summer is finding opportunities for student, um, student ch more opportunity for student choice in the material that we're doing and how they're showing up in the classroom that day. Uh, I am also looking very uh, much looking forward to looking at not just one year, but multiple years and kind of working backwards. And um, I think it's just going to help me organize everything bubbling around. You know? yeah. Like you said, theater is theater. Um, it's, it's always there. So finding those essential topics that, must, for example, tableau. Uh, taking like tableau, what it can look like for kindergarten, but then what I can expand into what it can look like for fifth grade. And that just because it was in fourth grade doesn't mean it can't go back to the beginning. 
Uh, echoing Rebecca, but also what you said about the performance having to have, like you can do it throughout, rather than, oh, this big thing at the end, we're gonna crush it, then, <laughs> then whatever. Um, but yeah. Definitely remembering what I like to do, because I definitely did a ton of things, like mime and puppets, that are 100% not within my skill set. <laughs> so I did not enjoy them, and I was very, like, this is, I don't like this, which is yeah. so weird, because I love theater. Yeah. So that was, like, very funny to go, oh, yes, do the things that I like to do. So it's weird that I had to be told that yes. thing. <laughs> it's really, like, my wheels are not like. Who said that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I have to agree with that and taking what we love, our artistry, and also the demands of the job and satisfying like, the expectations from our admin. But again, working backwards into the concept of time, like when you say you write a lesson, your lesson can take up three sessions and being okay with that and adapting it as needed. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm definitely going to consider mm -hmm. into the new school year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was just we're so grateful to be alive.